Thankfully, many vehicles are now coming with a location in the factory A-pillar that has a tweeter speaker. But if we want to replace that speaker, odds are we need to do some custom fabrication to mount a new tweeter in its place. We generally want to avoid using things like hot glue or plumber's strap to hold the tweeter in, so let's see if we can come up with a more robust bolt-in adapter, and let's cover some other steps that you should take to get optimal sound performance if using this factory location. I'm Mark. Welcome the car audio fabrication. Here on the channel, I'm currently working on adding several amplifiers, replacing all the speakers, and building a box for four 10 inch subwoofers. So if you wanna see more of this build, be sure to check out the channel. Before we get into it, a big thank you to show sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts makes a wide variety of different car audio wiring that has high end performance at a fair price. I am using their Colossus Flex power cable and Crystal Series signal cables along with power distribution throughout this build. I've used them for many years long before I ever started the channel, so if you guys want to learn more about them, check out the link down in the video description. So these particular A-pillars in the F-150, these were some of the easiest A-pillars I've ever had to remove. All I had to do was take a little plastic pry tool and pry off each of these access plates. So there's four bolts in total, and each of them is a 10 millimeter bolt. Now, if you're watching this video because you're planning on doing a vehicle other than an F-150, stick with me because there's going to be a lot of helpful, useful information that pertains to any vehicle that has speakers in the A-pillar. As a side note, this is a brand new vehicle and I do find it a bit interesting that here on the driver's side, they don't have any sound treatment foam in this location here or here or not even around the speaker but they do have it on the passenger side. I don't know guys, it kind of makes me wonder, are we seeing things like this left out of vehicles because of the current state of affairs in the world with the material shortages and things like that? Are automakers leaving stuff out that they think that we might not notice? I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Luckily enough, I have some different sound treatment materials that I can use to make this one match the passenger side. We're definitely going to want that same foam around the tweeter here. This is definitely something that's good to add and not every manufacturer has this from the factory anyhow, so this gives us a good chance to add it. Let's get these tweeters separated from the A-pillar by removing those fasteners. This piece of foam is held in place by the tweeter against the A-pillar there, and I matched it up with the end dents on the back side just so you guys could see how it matched to the front. So that piece of foam is also covering up part of the tweeter. That's definitely something we're going to want to address as well. The tweeters I'm gonna be using are these one inch silk dome tweeters from JL Audio. These are part of the C3 component speaker lineup. These have ferrofluid cooling and dampening, a neodymium magnet, and they come with plenty of different mounts mounting solutions, but in this case, we're gonna be making our own custom mount. What I need to do is get the tweeter positioned so that it's centered inside of that grill. I wanna get it mocked up in the perfect location so I can take a picture with my phone. Now a good way to help temporarily position this is to use some high-end speaker positioning putty. $50,000 I paid for this right here. So let's get this out of its tub and in the spot. I've got the tweeter in the position exactly where I want it using that high-end speaker positioning dough. And what I wanna do is I wanna take a picture with my phone from this exact angle. I wanna to try to be perfectly perpendicular to the back of this. That way I can design up and model my bracket that's going to pick up those two mounting holes and of course hold the tweeter. The tweeter grill definitely leaves a satisfying texture on that dough. I've moved to my computer so I could start designing this, and before we design, we do need to take some measurements. What's cool about these tweeters is they have this L channel lock on the side of them. There's two channels, one on each side. The way these channels work is there's two different mounting options that come with these tweeters, and a little nub goes up into the channel. You can then turn the speaker a few degrees, and that nub will lock the speaker in place. I want to try to capture the same functionality in the speaker adapter plate that I'm going to be making. Now because of that, I want to get the diameter, obviously, of the tweeter so that it can go down inside the hole, but I also want to measure and determine what size I need that nub to be 
be. So I'm going to take my measurements and come up with a design. So here it is, guys. I've come up with the complete design for this tweeter adapter plate, and I want to run you through the process. So I started with that picture I took on my phone, and that's going to allow me to make the basic geometry here. And I also have some measurements, one of which being the overall diameter of our new aftermarket tweeter. So I started with drafting that up. So this circle here represents the outside diameter of that tweeter, which I was able to measure. I then also incorporated the measurements for those tabs that we were talking about that will allow this ring to lock onto the tweeter. I then made a nice circle on the outside here. That's going to be the outside of this adapter plate. And I wanted to make sure that it was big enough that I had some thickness so that the part is good and strong, but not so big that it gets in the way of this here. After that, I also added a tab on the top and bottom of the adapter plate. That allows me to have a through hole, which I measured to make sure that I had enough size for our factory fasteners to go down through. And it's obviously lined up perfectly with each of the different mounting locations. So once I had all of that drawn up, I was able to make this into an extrusion here, and we can go ahead and hide that sketch. So this gives us our 3D geometry. Now, I did want to give it more of a finished feel and look, and also on these inside corners, it's always a good idea to not have a hard 90 degree corner like that, where a crack can easily propagate, especially in plastics. So what I like to do is I'll add a little round over in there on each of the those corners also on the outside edges just giving it a much more finished look and appeal now from here I was able to export my data for this design and we're gonna take it on over to the laser now don't forget if you don't have a laser you could always take your data to a sign shop a lot of sign shops have a laser cutter they can make this there's a lot of maker spaces always popping up in different cities you could try to find one near you that has a laser cutter or you could also look into 3d printing this adapter 3d printer have definitely come down in price so this is definitely something that the DIYer can obtain and do in today's day and age. Before I cut my part from expensive acrylic I'm going to use cardboard. Let's get this cut started here. The reason I like to use cardboard first is I can test out and make sure all the sizes work the way I intend them to and it cuts super quickly. There's our part. With my test piece here, I see that I have a nice, good, tight fit around the outside. These tabs work like I intended them to, to lock into that L channel. Let's see how these look on the back of the pillar. Matches up with the back of the pillar nicely too. You can see that those mounting holes line up nicely for our screws. So we should be good to go here. I'm gonna cut these from acrylic. So now that we have the acrylic tweeter plates cut out, I can remove that protective covering and let's see how these fit on the tweeter. I gotta get my positioning real quick. All right, I want them like this. All right, let's see here. So our little tab there goes into the notch. Press it down in. We can rotate these. Man, I love it. Now they are locked in place. That tweeter is not going anywhere. Before we mount the tweeters though, we do want to make sure that we have that nice seal that's going to make sure that all the sound goes through this grill. We don't want any of the sound waves that come from this tweeter to be allowed to travel back and forth inside this panel. We want to do our best to direct them through the grill. So to do that, we're going to be using some weather stripping here. I've taken this weather stripping and I've cut it in half so that it's a little bit thinner. And you want to make sure you're using a closed cell type foam. I can then remove the adhesive backing and carefully wrap this piece of foam tape around the outside perimeter of the tweeter. So we now have a nice perfect foam seal around the outside of the speaker and what I like to do is I'll shine a light on in from the front here just to make sure that it's not actually covering up the speaker. In this case it's definitely not. So we are good to go. We've got that tweeter mounted in. In the meantime, I've also mounted the one over on this side. And remember those pieces of foam that I said were missing. I went ahead and replaced those as well, just so we have consistency between the two sides. Now that we can reinstall the A-pillars, we still have plenty more to do on this build. We need to run the wiring back to the custom amplifier rack. We have a custom underseat subwoofer enclosure to build. We need to make some custom speaker adapters to hold the speakers into the doors and more 
part. So if you guys wanna catch those future videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Don't forget, next time you need wiring for a car audio build, definitely check out show sponsor, New Concepts. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for tuning in and watching.